public meeting for this evening. On behalf of the board of directors and staff of the Ontario Fire and Polar Association, I would like to welcome everyone to the 40th Builders of the Industry Dinner, honoring inductees to the Fire and Polar Hall of Fame. The Ontario Fire and Polar Association continues to explore new ways to uh, recognize outstanding participation in our sport. The Hall of Fame process begins with the nominations received from known associations. Local associations such as Niagara, Central Ontario, Hamilton, and York Simcoe all have developed their own formal induction ceremonies to recognize the individuals who have contributed in their local association success. These own ceremonies serve as the additional attraction of assisting the provincial selection committee in the accumulation of information about potential inductees. At this time, I'd like to offer my personal congratulations to every one of the inductees this evening. As you will hear shortly, each inductee has had an exciting pipe and bowling career and a direct effect on the sport of pipe and bowling. Tonight's inductees have exhibited talent, drive, and commitment to the pursuit of their goals. On behalf of the selection committee, we would like to thank all of, all of our inductees this evening, their family and friends who have helped supply us with the photographs and valuable information you'll see during this evening's ceremonies. At this time, Please help me in honoring for the passing away of our inductees who have passed since our last ceremony. Born in Chapeau in Northern Ontario, Nita moved to Toronto and bowled on, on five provincial championship teams from 1964 to 1984. Four of these teams won the Canadian national champions, and in 1969, she won the Ontario Open singles title. Nita was a charter member of the Master Bowlers Association, as well as winning on the lanes she conducted many construction clinics across the province. Dita was inducted as a player in 1986 and a builder in 2006. And as well in 2000, she was ranked number 11 on the top 90 list. Dita Procher. Born in Toronto in 1928, Al began to bowl as in an industrial league at Lakeside Bowl in Toronto's West End. Inducted as a player in 1996, Al was the first bowler to participate in 30 opens. In 1986, he bowled a perfect game at the Open, actually the second one of his career, and that was also an excellent coach. First at the Queensway, and then at Newmarket, and then in Newmarket. First, his four children, Mary Ann, Sheila, Kathy, and Al Jr., were also top bowlers. The Snowman was a dominant bowler of our sport. In 2000, Al was ranked number nine in the top 90 list, Al Snow. A giant figure in our sport, Bill Holt, was bowling in the Toronto City Major League at the age of 12. Just two years later, he was a champion in the annual Canadian Bowling Association All Events Tournament. Moving to the adult ranks, Bill won the Open Singles in 1964, 1965, and then 1970, and also a Canadian Singles title in 1964. He's also a charter member of the Master Bowlers Association of Ontario, Bill won, Bill won their national singles title in 1968. Bill was inducted as a player in 1986 and selected number six in the top 90 list in 2000. Inducted with her husband Ross in 2003, Shirley was part of the formation of the new 1000 Lakes Zone. Shirley managed the bowling center in Fenland Falls and had 500 bowlers on eight lanes and a very attractive decentralized association at the time. At both the zone and decentralized level, Shirley handled booster, awards, membership, lottery, record scores, and was also their tournament director. Ross passed away in 2001, and Shirley and Ross are remembered as lifelong volunteers with the Ontario Fight for Bowlers Association. <coughs> Anita from Jamaica, Jerry James came to Canada and was soon hired by Brunswick. He was involved with the installations of bowling lanes and soon took to the work at the bowling center level itself. Jerry started James Bowling Services and began to install lanes across Canada and specifically in Ontario, continuing for 65 years. Eventually, his own, he owned Westside Bowl in Owen Sound and also Markham Bowl in Markham. Jerry was a strong supporter of the organized bowling and was, was, induct, and was inducted into the York Simcoe Pipe and Bowlers Hall of Fame in 2008 and the Ontario Pipe and Bowlers Association Hall of Fame as a builder in 2011. <laughs> Born in England, 
John Scholes came to Canada in 1925 and settled in Wellington. He set the hymns of Miller Lanes and rolled a perfect game there in 1941, and a second one in 1962, and a cataract lanes in Niagara Falls. Uh, John won the O'Connor Open in 1966 and also appeared on the CBC television series four times. In 2000, John was ranked number 25 in the top 90 list. John was inducted as a player in 1987 and passed away just last month at 97 years of age. Walter Valentine was born in Austria in 1929 and emigrated to Canada, settling in Gulf. He joined the bowling team at Waterloo Lane and soon became part of the organizing team at the new association in 1964. As Walter led a strong membership campaign, his efforts led to his hiring by the Ontario Bowlers Congress in 1971. Walter sold the new decentralized association process across Canada, or sorry, across the province, and more than 100 new DCs were created. Love to have those down. The success led to his hiring by the Bowling Proprietors Association as their executive director. Staying there for 40 years, Walter, among many, among many other innovations, advanced and approved the approval process of positive liquor legislation in bowling centers. But more important was, was the creation of a new level of trust between proprietors and the bowlers. He was inducted as a builder in 1991. <clears throat> Thank you to Zita, Al, Bill, Shirley, Jerry, John, and Walter for all that you've done for Five Pin Bowling. Your contributions to our chosen sport of Five Pin Bowling will not be forgotten. For what seems like a long time ago, I can remember sitting in at a Hall of Fame ceremony and listening for the first time to what turned out to be an amazing dream. The dream has been modified over the years, and as, and as more Hall of Fame members have, with more Hall of Fame members who are no longer with us. I hope this dream continues to evolve as does our sport. At this time, I would call upon Walter Heaney to once again to take us on his dream into the Hall of Fame 2017 edition. Walter. Is it at a bowling center, or maybe the old Sport Alliance building, or at the c &E? No, it's not in any of these places, but I assure you, it does exist. Recently in a deep sleep, I caught a glimpse of the Hall of Fame and it was quite a place. I had a chance to meet everyone, and for so many, an opportunity to put a living face with the names and pictures I have become familiar with over the years. Wouldn't you know, when I arrived, it was bowling night. Teams were on the lanes and the center itself was beautiful. Its name, Future Lanes, were years ahead of our time, seemed appropriate, and the Cloud Nine Lounge was complete with, of course, a full array of virtual reality games, which everybody knew how to play. Jack Fine wanted the name changed to, naturally, Future Lanes Bowl Around. <coughs> The bowling center was run by experts and they were all there. John Martin, Wilf Barlow, Jim Beforth, Leon Gudecki, Ralph Crump, Bob Totsky, and Jerry James. Heaven was about to get organized. Marge Moore was starting a YBC and Al Richardson was pairing up bowlers for a high low doubles. Ernie Rogie was getting accustomed to his new surroundings and starting to renew acquaintances as he was now joined by Walter Valentine. It was all I could do to control myself as I walked over to see this large group. I'm Walter Heaney, I said with hesitation, and John, Wilf, Jim, Ralph, and Bob recognized me and quickly introduced me to Leon Gudecki. How did you get here, remarked Leon. Well, I was quick to add that I was just visiting. Oscar Kinsler was in the process of installing pin centers with invisible string, and Tom Craig was busy certifying the lanes. Bob Totsky, however, quickly took over and said, now that you're here, why don't you bowl with us? The offer was too good to refuse. On these lanes of the future, no one wore bowling shoes. A simple touch on the foot, and it was as smooth as any bowling shoe. 
You automatically stopped prior to the foul line as sensors slowed you down. The score stands were all computerized and the digital scoreboards were manned by the best. Charlie Hill, Red McQuaker, Bill Graham, and Marge Bentley, old friends from the CBA days. And from the current era, Arnold Whitley of Hamilton and Walter Knapp of Mid Elgin and St. Thomas. And of course, Henry Fair of Toronto. Personalized bowling balls, been using them for years, said a voice I recognized as Mert Rowell of Hamilton. And I hear they're very popular down there as well. Windsor's Don Winden was trying to run a fundraiser, but funding didn't seem to be an issue. As I looked around, bowlers were warming up everywhere. Hamilton had their own team, as Mert, Stan Battersby, Dick Brett, Ab Collingwood, Edna Rimmer, Lloyd Omerod, Beer Award, Bert Adams, and Glad Lenz played with great ease. Bert Adams could bowl the ball faster than ever, and Shirley Vidal was now joined by Evelyn Wood. Fred Smith, Irene Whitley, and Susan Davies were all there, a potent Hamilton team. On some other lanes, Toronto and area bowlers were just as active. And I saw the snowman, Al Snow, Hugh Connolly, Charlie DeMellis, Rolly Glanfield, Eddie Hawks, Fred Holly, Earl Jones, Ken Roy, Lee McVeigh, Fred Petrolock, Nora Oakley, Mabel McDowell, Ma Maury, Doris Luke, Holly Miller, Millie Evans, and of course, Theta Approach. Holly Lee and Jimmy Holt were together and it was just like old times. Lots of small talk with the ladies, nothing changed. <laughs> Basil Castillo and Connie D'Alessandro were chatting. A little English, a little Italian. I met my old friend Tom Horton, and I also said hello to both Shirley and Ross Wilson, as Shirley now joined Ross, thinking that he needed some unneeded guidance. And as usual, Ross had the biggest grin on his face that you ever saw. A provincial all-star team consisted of Thelma Thompson, June Gregg, Barb Bowman, and Norm Kratz of Kitchener, Emil Cote and Doug Connerty of Ottawa, Johnny Moyer and Marge Heldman of Waterloo, and both of them were talking over old times with Bill Bedford. B. Ross Katelko of Oshawa, Doris Stewart and Jerry Carlson of Scarborough, and Oshawa's Bob Gallagher were there, and Bob was ready to bowl doubles with his old friend Dick Adams of Whitney. I saw Mark Morrissey, and in her own way, she apologized for missing her own dinner. Joe Chickie was as smooth as ever, Bob Faulkner was busy just organizing, and Verna Bryan added her lovely personality to the Niagara group, along with the newly arrived John Scholes. Just then, another Hall of Fame, another familiar face caught my eye, none other than Percy Cutting. Better yet, Percy was not alone as Flo was now beside him. He was beaming. The Hall of Fame is a perfect place now, Percy said. Flo and I can bowl all we want and we share the secretarial duties. As well, Jack Hales, Bill Bird, and of course Bert Garside are all here. Jack and Bert have found a racetrack where every horse you bet on is a winner. And Bill has already given a speech and started a newsletter called The Heavenly Times. Billy Holt was there with a glint in his eye talking over the good old days. Before I could bowl, Percy wanted the latest news. I told him that John Cresswell continues as president of the Ontario Five Men Bowlers Association. And Fraser Hamley is doing a great job as the Hall of Fame chair. You can see the gleam in Percy's eye and you just knew he enjoyed the news. As I was about to bowl my first ball, Percy grabbed me by the arm and held me back. A silence came over the lanes as the legend steamer arrived. Tommy Ryan led the way, but he was closely followed by Tony Vitus, Brock Bailey, Marion Dibble, George Corbridge, Jimmy Morris, Frank Smith, Al Gard, and Vera Inglis, his friends from the early days of bowling. Did you ever meet Tommy? asked Percy. No, I replied. Well, tonight's the night. He said as we glided across the lanes to where Tommy and his friends were situated. Tommy, I want you to meet Walter Heaney, said Percy. No, he continued, he hasn't arrived here yet. He appears to just have a special pass. Quickly, I tried to pull my thoughts together as Tommy noted. Our sport has lasted over a hundred years and we have lots to celebrate, including a stamp which was created for fighting <coughs> bullies 100th birthday. Thanks to everyone for their efforts. 
Somehow, the conversation seemed to end as Tommy rolled up the first ball for the evening's activities. And just like that, I woke up. The Five Pin Bowling Hall of Fame, it exists. I've seen it. Yes, I've even been there. Thank you. speeches, I would like to call upon the President of, of Bull Ontario Five Pin to say a few words. As, as the co-owner and general manager of Playmore Lane, Brian started his career at the age of 13 as a pin chaser and cleaned for Don and Dorothy Walker. As President of the Bull Ontario Five Pin, he is an influential, influential voice at the Bull Canada Board meetings regarding the advancement of our programs. Brian has a passion for coaching both with YBC and the adult five bowlers for at least 25 years, attaining his level two, the old level two, and he's moved up to the uh, new competitive coach for 20 years. And Brian has coached at the Open for 10 times, and has bowled in the Open himself for five times. I ask you to join me in welcoming to the podium the president of Bowl Ontario Five Men, Brian Bridget. from it, it didn't sound too bad. Thank you. Well, that was incredible. Thank you, Walter. That was unbelievable. Um, not great at speeches, but I need to break this. I'm not going to take up a lot of time. Um, good evening, President Greswell, Ontario Five Pin Board Association Board, Hall of Fame inductees, past Hall of Fame inductees, fellow proprietors, and guests. It is my great pleasure tonight, on behalf of the Five Pin proprietors of Southern Ontario to be here this evening to witness another great group of elite five bowlers, builders, and legends from arguably the best province in the nation inducted into the Five Pin Hall of Fame tonight. I took the time to read about everyone's success on the uh, list tonight and in the uh, brochure that was handed out. I can only say to myself one another amazing group of people being inducted tonight and what an honor to be listed with many other greats in our sport. It is obvious that the board that creates a list of the new companies every other year takes the time and diligence that the recipients are viable, but to me, this is a list once again that is more than deserving. I had the pleasure of driving here tonight with a couple of familiar names you may have heard of, Donnie Metz and Paul Asselin, Couple names on the Hall of Fame list. Donnie Betts from St. Catharines and Paul from Welland. Couple of gentlemen who I'm very fond of uh, since growing up at Playmore. Uh, where Donnie and Paul still bowl, and I don't take that for granted by any means. Uh, Donnie over the years has shared a lot of great stories, both in Ontario and all over the country, with many of you here tonight plus many other great bowlers as well. At times I wish the ride from St. Catharines was all the way to Ottawa, but uh, to Hamilton is just as good. I'm not sure at times of those stories help me progress in the bowling industry or not, but it goes without saying how dedicated to fight and bowling, Donnie, Paul, and each and every one of you are here tonight. You're all here for more than one reason, probably more than 100 reasons. So hold your head high tonight, and take in all that this evening has to offer. Best of luck with your travels in the five and bowling for the future. We can only be so lucky that you carry on tomorrow in your respective centers and moving forward each and every other day when you've already given us and passing on your knowledge to our youth bowlers. And with any luck, they will create a new list of Hall of Famers for the future as well. Well, without taking any of your time, I don't have my glass, but uh, 
sure you all do in front of you. Please raise your, raise your glass and a toast for all the fingers and everybody here tonight. We are a unique, amazing group. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Board of Directors to embark on this worthwhile program. Shirley saw her dream come to fruition in 1970 when two builders and eight players were inducted. Shirley developed the criteria, the, the nomination forms, and assisted in the selection of the inductees. Perhaps Shirley's success was too tough of an act to follow because the process fell dormant for a few years until 1973. And then that time, then a builders of the Building on the idea of the proprietor guy, fine, O5 PBH partnered with both the Bowling Proprietors and the Master Bowlers Association of Ontario to conduct 13 dinners recognizing builders of our build builders of the bowling industry. Then in 1986, the Hall of Fame concept, with approval and cooperation of bowling proprietors, was revitalized and reintroduced <coughs> by the Ontario Pipe and Bowlers Association, Eric Whitaker and Brian Champagne. Our last Hall of Fame committee chairman, the late Ernie Rogge, undertook an ex extensive revamping of the selection process, beginning a new sense of order to both the nomination and the selection of candidates, as well as all his work on our technical programs. After Ernie, Walter took the reins to chair the Hall of Fame committee during his tenure. Walter's professional manner to streamline the Hall of Fame selection process was second to none. Walter stepped down as the chair after the completion of the Hall of Fame ceremony in 2013. And we once again want to thank Walter for all his dedication to the sport of pipe and bowling. We want to thank Hall of Fame chair Fraser Hambly, technically a rookie, as this is his first induction ceremony he has been able to attend since becoming the Hall of Fame chair. The selection committee members and the 05 PBA board of directors for the time and effort that they have been they have spent in in reviewing and adapting categories and criteria of the Hall of Fame to ensure that it continues to reflect contemporary standards and to consider the broadest possible pool of nominees. Through our Legends category, we continue to recognize those individuals from an early era of our sport. However, we us a need to recognize those who are still alive. Tonight, we will honor one living legend. In the cat players category, those who start on, start on the links we recognize four players. Many have left their marks as coaches and administrators as well. We will elevate three of our builders to the highest honor of sport can bestow on its own, and that is membership in the Hall of Fame. And as well, two bowlers, one living and one deceased, will receive dual induction to the builders and players divisions respectively. Our builders division was expanded a number of years ago to recognize local volunteers who have been essential to the growth and continuance of our sport. Our annual Hall of Fame game held in conjunction with the Provincial Open Championships Easter weekend is another chance to recognize our Hall of Fame members. And it is an aspiration, to, it is an inspiration to see so many familiar faces return to the lane for this special event. And good news, once again this year, due to some sponsorship, we will be continuing that tradition again this season. Flo Cutting, the First Lady of Bowling, played an important role in the history of our organization. She was the first secretary of the Ontario Bowlers Congress, a life member of, the, of our organization, and the flow was inducted as a builder of the industry in 1973, and as a builder of the Hall of Fame itself in 1986. Flo commissioned the magnificent Hall of Fame plaque and Old Hollywood trophies, on which every inductee has her name permanently recorded. And we have it here with us again this evening, and it's been updated with tonight's honorees. This plaque is dedicated in the memory of Flo's husband, a good friend of bowling and a legend in the Hall of Fame, the late Percy Cutting. This was the most generous gift from Flo Cutting 
and further underscores her impact on our sport. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lake Flow and Percy Cutting. As a memento, each of our first five inductees who are with us tonight will be presented with a distinctive ring, which has been custom crafted for the Five Pin Bowling Hall of Fame. We plan to continue to present to all future inductees as well. Living dual inductees have the option of receiving a plaque or the option of having a diamond added to their ring to signify their dual induction. The family of our posthumous inductee, Irene Whitley, will be presented with a custom designed plaque acknowledging her, her dual induction at, the Metro, at an upcoming Metro Toronto ceremony being held in 2018. Before we begin the speeches, I'd like to take a minute to explain how we will proceed with the presentations. After each of our honorees has been introduced and inducted by our speaker, they will be escorted to the left of the podium and over to the Hall of Fame plaque to receive their uh, ring from Fraser Handley for most of them at least. Fraser's got to put up with me for his enough. <laughs> and each inductee will return to their seat and we will begin the induction of the next new member. I ask each of you to not attempt to photograph the ring presentation while they are being made. Instead, our inductees will be more than happy to pose for you for a few minutes immediately after the dinner. And thank you for your cooperation on this. For the speeches we are about to hear tonight, it will be a time to remember the good old days, to look at some vintage photographs and some videos, and to remember the names and faces of old friends. Some of the people in this room tonight were with our inductees as teammates, friends, family, and even competitors over the years. Others know these names from stories recounted when bowlers get together and reminisce. But tonight, we all join together to honor them for their achievements in reaching the pinnacle of performance induction into the Python Bowling Hall of Fame. Now I invite you to all sit back, relax, and listen as I once again call upon all the to begin the proceedings. Walter. becomes the 16th dual inductee to the Five Men Bowling Hall of Fame. Some 28 years ago, in 1989, Fraser was inducted to our Hall of Fame as a bowler. However, since that time, he has added to his online resume, resume while also growing his reputation as a builder of our sport. Since 1989, Fraser has won the Ontario Singles Championship twice in 1990 and 1992. And this 1992 pose was turned into a greeting card as the Ontario Five Pin Bowlers Association honored a now four-time provincial singles champion. As well, he was a member of three provincial championship teams, winning in 1992, 1993, and 1996. Here is a 1992 team that following their win in Ontario, finished second nationally. From the top left are John Sinclair, then there's Mike Wood, Greg Pederitis, Carm Perillo, and Rob Robertson. <coughs> Seated are Fraser at the left, coach in the middle is Scott Parsons, and Jim Schwartzman. He also won five provincial NBAO tournaments, including the 1990 Rose Festival. Seen here with Connie Ward, another of tonight's honorees, and of course, NBAO president, Tom Horton, and the other gentleman is Alan Wimbush, the chairman of the Rose Festival. In addition, he was a member of the 1991 Ontario men's team that won the NBAC Nationals in Winnipeg. Along with at the top there is Jordan Trainer, Jim Federenko, and David Michael. And again, another inductee tonight in the bottom row, Dale Strutt. The coach is Brian Kay, and of course, Fraser. In the Masters, he has 22 victories covering both the regular and the senior tour. And this total is second only to another Hall of Famer, Nick Pagnello, who has 24 wins. Here is a special one in 2006 with, of course, the Special Olympics. From the left are NBAO president Brenda Pankow, Fraser, Betty Horton, the co-winner with Fraser, Jerry Horner, 
and Joe Rickey of the Special Olympics. It all started at Shays Avenue Road, as Fraser took up bowling at the age of 13. I thought it was the same picture we almost used for his uh, on the screen. <laughs> but here he is with the bowling center manager, a gentleman named Dick Bell. At 15, Fraser captured the Canadian Junior Championship and was soon bowling against the best adult bowlers of the day. Five pin bowling was growing quickly, and as a teenager, Fraser was a young star. He was pictured with radio celebrity Joe Prysdale and also seen on the side of delivery trucks of the Toronto Telegram. <laughs> Working with Bert Garside, Fraser, along with another Hall of Famer, Doug Kane, began a lane certification process throughout Eastern Ontario. And this effort culminated with Fraser delivering the first lane certification seminar, and it was also at the first convention in 1967. From the early 70s, Fraser began to take on executive roles in his various leagues including the prestigious Toronto Major League. And he also just concluded a 12-year stint with the Master Bowlers Association, reaching the level of Vice President. To this day, he does continue to compile their valuable statistics around tournament wins and years of membership. Fraser has been a promoter of five-pin bowling everywhere, and he has been pictured with the best. Here with Diane Violetti of Alberta, who along with Art Carney Ward, are the top two female bowlers in Canada. With Kerry Ryan Kayak, one of Canada's top 10 pin bowlers. With the top male duck pin bowlers of the day, that's Don Dub on the right and Jeff Piles is on the left. We were at Jimmy Holt's Hall of Fame induction. That's yours truly on the left, then Fraser, Jimmy, and of course, Ian Cameron. On television, Fraser was interviewed by George Strombolopoulos regarding something you might not know about Canada, and I invite you now to watch your screens. Fraser, Henry Fair, Bob Coulter, and Betty Jones. 
Seated from the left are yours truly, then Al Hong, Walter Valentin, Dave Pokes, and Ernie Rowe. Continuing with promotion, Fraser was front and center when the Queen visited Canada in 2002. Lanes were installed at the CNE, five pin bowling was demonstrated, and of course, Fraser was our sport representative. We opened a redecorated Shamrock Bowl in East Toronto, and in this shot, the gentleman on the left is Fred Sador, then yours truly, Ron Ellis of the Stanley Cup favorite Toronto Maple Leafs. No, <laughs> not as much anymore. And of course, Fraser is on the right. Fraser was interviewed on the TSN Pins game in 1998, seen here with Greg Cook of Bowl Canada. An award of excellence from the Master Bowlers of Canada in 2015. Recognized Fraser for performance, volunteerism, and support, all appropriate categories. Fraser and his wife, Hope, of course, they're married 45 years and they continue to live in North Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, a builder of our sport, dual inductee, Fraser Hamlin. a bowler in this room tonight who is not aware of the Carlings. For a four-week period from late November through early December, the bowling world focuses on a 20-game roll-off at its own level, and that phrase everybody's asking, did you make it? In my old Scarborough zone, the representative was a fellow named George Narraway. He attended the roll-off, took beer orders from everyone, and they were delivered to your house before Christmas. Those were the good old days of the 60s. <laughs> Easter weekend from 1965 to today, we are at the Oak, mostly at Sherwood Center, 44 years in all. And we bowled under several brands, from Red Cap to Black Label, Old Vienna, and of course, Colt 45. We crowned our champions this gives us a chance to look at some of the previous ones. Here's 1968 when Canadian single champion Fraser Hamley is on the left. The gentleman in the middle from Carlings is Reg Bovaird. And the, the lady, of course, is Hamilton's Edna River. In 1973, Fraser won again and is congratulated by Carling reps Ron Lennick and Dave Hagee. And of course, that's our own Jack Dales on the right. Carlings even tried to cancel the sponsorship in 1974 when that same Dave Hagee that you saw in the previous picture came to convention and announced that the sponsorship was over. Herb Garside and Ruth Holman, who were our office staff, said, no way. They prepared a 50-page presentation which outlined the bowler support. And the company president at that time, a fellow named Wilma Tennyson, instead of canceling the sponsorship, he actually doubled it. Over the years, we've met some great people. Ron Lennick, Al Brooke, George Fuller, of course, who is here tonight, Reg Bovaird, Gord Walker, all great gentlemen and terrific supporters of our sport. Convention was the ideal place to recognize Carlos. <laughs> and who more fitting than tonight's honoree, Ron Roeder, that's him on the left, Ripper, I mean, bald as he is, he's here tonight as well. Of course, his name Dave Dean. 
and Larry Schmidt is the gentleman, and they're seen here in 1988. That's quite a bottle. <laughs> we honored Carlo K. Burris as a builder of our industry in 1978 and president and chief executive of Roderick McGinnis attended that night. Gord Walker even bought the Toronto Argonaut Sunshine Girls to convention in 1982, and their appearance made a rainy day go by very quickly. In all, over $1 million was contributed in sponsorship, not only for the Open, but also the convention, the small ball event in Manila, in the Philippines, and of course a big one, the CBC television series. Sold in 1989 to Molson, the bowling industry and Carly breweries enjoyed a wonderful and beneficial partnership, and as an industry, we can only say thank you. Tonight, a Hall of Fame recognition for Carling O'Keefe Breweries and George Fuller will accept on behalf of the company. Thank you. Tom Patterson has done it all. Athlete, salesman, politician, father, and tonight recognized as a legend in our Hall of Fame program. Tom was born in Toronto. Good looking fellow, isn't he? When his family moved to Oakville as Tom is a teenager, he transferred his bowling talents to Hopedale Bowl. He also expanded his athleticism to both baseball and hockey and there's Tom in the top row, the second fellow in from the left, playing hockey for a local Oakville company. The young Tom was also a very talented bowler, and as an 18-year-old senior, Tom bowled a perfect game during the big play. And that same year, there were two perfect games at the center, the first two in over 20 years. But I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, be assured, this sanctioned perfect game was exceptional, as not many 18-year-olds have ever bowled a 450 score, score in our sport. Also in the YBC, Tom advanced with his Oakville group to the annual Shays Chain Tournament in Toronto. That's Tom at the top left, and the, and the, uh, the coach at the back is Daryl Carson. This ability introduced Tom to the major leagues while still in the YBC. These bowlers competed in a 20 game tournament and Tom was a high bowler in one of the five game ships. The gentleman on the right, by the way, is Jack Hardiman, who is the father of the late Al Hardiman. The Open was next and Tom began to qualify in 1969. Tom won provincial titles on four occasions. In this 1971 contingent from Central Ontario has many familiar faces. At the top left, you're gonna start with Eric Whitaker, then there's George Barber. The next gentleman is Lloyd Barkle. Then you'll see Ed Holland. Tom is in the center. Gord Passmore, Doug Robertson, and on the right, Fred McQuaker. On the bottom row, the second lady in is Judy Culver. Then I think it's Vadis Wood. Uh, moving along, uh, Marlene Van Norman, Ruth Dickinson, a second from the right, and Mark Bratkin. This 1978 mixed team from Hamilton won provincially and bowled nationally in Thunder Bay. From the top left, there's Norm Bird, 
John Willick, he might be the fellow we talk about with no hair. <laughs> Ian Wilson was there. No, it's not. Jerry Bajan is the next one. I'm sorry, and then Tom. Seated, and Mary Ozier, the coach, and he's here tonight, Tom Paletta, and Kathy Sinti. This 1984 championship team from Hamilton won nationally in Saskatoon. At the top left is Lloyd Omarage. Then Nancy Lloyd, the scorer is Ellen Rosan, Irene Whitley, Pat Mahoney, and Tom at the hat. <laughs> Seated at the left are Mike Bates, the youngest coach ever to win at the Open. That next fellow is John Condy, and then Ian Wilson. I knew he was something. <laughs> in 1990, this Tri-County team won provincially and bowled nationally back in Hamilton. From the top left, that's Bill Hollins, Tom, the scorer is Debbie Feeney, Danny Scott, and Al Hardiman. Seated are Paul Stemler, the coach was Brian Feeney, and Rick Mayer. Tom joined the Master Bowlers Association and as early as 1974, won a national championship with the Ontario men's team while bowling in St. Catharines. He was also a zone delegate for the NBA and this group was photographed in 1987. <coughs> Standing from the left are Richard Raphael, Jim Northey, Jack Bowler, Maurice Sharon, Steve Biffus, Mars D'Onofrio, Gary Fair, John Reza, John Willick again, and Steve Kinnon. Seated are Ernie Jonker, Doc Britton, Joe Dino, Sylvia Davies, and Tom. Tom was a promoter and a super salesman and also understood the mechanics of our sport. In 1978, Tom conducted a series of successful bowling clinics at Ancaster Bowl, and the promotion, as you can see here, was advertised in the Dundas Star. As well, Tom set record scores at several centers through the Hamilton and surrounding area. Included were a five-game score of 1675 at Bramall Lee, a 1032 triple at Waterdown, another triple 1094 at Hopedale Bowl, and a 1005 triple at Ancaster. Tom also took his talents to the political arena and served for 12 years from 1994 to 2006 representing the town of Haldeman and ultimately reached the level of deputy mayor. Prior to entering politics, Tom made a wise decision and married, uh, and married Muriel Stewart. Together, they have an extended family of 19 and here's a small group. At the back, the top back left is TJ, Tom, and Troy. And in the front are Adam, Jade, Spencer, I'm here. Muriel, everybody raise their hand, and, uh, and Rianne. And the mainstay of many families, two dogs, Sandy and Coco Bob. And I think Sandy was lost over the summer, and uh, it's always Sandy. But here's our man, Tom Patterson, salesman, promoter, father, and a legend in our sport, and a legend in our Hall of Fame, Tom Patterson.
have the right to screw up through the Youth Bowling Council at Queensway Bowl. And as you might understand, Greg and his partner Mike Wood live in Calgary, and uh, with, they don't fly anymore, so driving down is really not an option. And uh, we knew that at a very early time in this process. And uh, like I say, it's just as we age, that's certainly what happens. But uh, Greg, as we say, grew up at, uh, through his youth bowling at Queensway at an early age. He learned the value of practice. Encouraged by his father, Greg developed a delivery that was opposite to most right-handed bowlers as he finished on his right foot rather than the left foot for a right-handed player. That's so that didn't come wrong. <laughs> Be assured, he excelled at the Youth Bowling Council, winning the Pepsi Challenge, and here received a trophy from the sponsor representative, Madeline Burns. Greg qualified for his first of 24 Opens in 1980, and he was a provincial team champion on six occasions. This 1987 championship, championship team from York West, as in the top left, the gentleman from Carlings, then Arnold Vesick, Greg is the second rep, then Ernie Shepard, and the gentleman on the right is Craig Busatow. Seated from the left are John Snell, Sam Fabrizio, Steve Conopalki, Rick Wilkins, and Lauren Shook. This York West team won both provincially and nationally in 1989. From the top left are Len Martin, Steve Alexiitis, Greg, and Mike Wood. The bottom left is Rick Wilkins. The coach in the middle, of course, is Frank Pup and Basil Gassi. Greg won two provincial opens with York West, two with Toronto, and two with Ontario Durham. Here's the 1993 group from Toronto. From the top left there, of course, you can see Johnny, John Honeyford, Mike LeClaire, Greg, the gentleman from Carlings, Mike Wood, and Jim Glanfield, the gentleman who you may know just passed away in the last couple of months. But seated, of course, is Fraser on the left, the coach in the middle once again is Scott Parsons and Tony DiRienzo. This 1998 group won from Ontario Durham. From the top left are John Inglis, Dave Slappendale, Ross McNichol, and Steve Parker. Neely are Vince Desiro, coach Mike Childerhose, and Greg. Greg joined the Master Bowlers Association in 1980, and in just over 20 years won eight tournaments, qualified for 12 nationals, including a record eight in a row. A really phenomenal streak. Receiving a, a winning tournament check here is Greg, the runner-up is Jordan Craner on the left, and of course that's NBAO President Tom Horton in the center. He won the 1981 Mixed Triples, partnering with Helen McCallum and Brad Fleming. And of course, Tom Horton is on the left. He won the 1985 Spring Classic. Along with the ladies' winner there is Diane McLeod. <coughs> the runner-ups are Diane Harrison on the left, and John Willick is there again on the right, and of course with Tom Horton. Here's the 1997 Elimination Knockout winners, and that's Greg, of course, with Brenda Walters. This NBA C team from 1984 as Norton Sims, Paul Stemler, Mickey Piker, Coach Eddie Holland, Greg, and Dave Katnack. And this group won a silver medal in Saskatoon. In the Masters, Greg was the Ontario singles rep twice in 1991 and 1994. And following the 1991 win, a bowling card was produced to recognize his Bowler of the Year achievement. In 1994 in Oshawa, Greg won the Canadian Singles Championship, and the singles reps from the eight provinces were photographed in our 1957 shed. From the left are Terry Blake, and then you'll see Bruce Mortar, Greg, and Doug Wood. In the car in the front are Mark Medor, with Wayne Davies behind the wheel, and in the back is the other Tom Patterson, that guy from the west, along with Leo Dugan. Greg was certainly a star in our sport. In this promotional shot, four of the best were featured at Sherwood Center with Helen McCallum, Greg Fraser, and Ian Cameron. As a star, Greg was, Greg was the first Canadian bowler to try the Duck Bin Tour in the United States. He also won two Manitoba Opens and two more at the KG Bowl in Saskatoon. 
Overall grade won approximately $135,000 in prize money. In addition, there were two perfect games, two TSN titles, two high average titles in the Toronto City Major League, and four wins in the 369 Winter Classic in Oshawa. These achievements led to Gray being voted the number three bowler on the top 90 list as published in 2000. Greg Pederitis was driven to attain a high performance level. And it can be said he was mostly successful. But as I said at the beginning, he now lives in Calgary. He continues to bowl 50 games a week, does a little coaching. In his own words, told me, I still love five pin bowling. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer Greg Pederitis and Don By the trophies, Lynn was a very good youth bowler. In Collingwood, the bowling center was owned by Dalton Sampson, and he recognized very early Lynn's ability, and he also knew that Lynn would do well as a qualifier for the provincial open. As such, beginning in 1980, Lynn began a streak of qualifying 34 times, 12 as the zone champion, 26 times in the singles and only one off the record high of 27, tallied by Hall of Famer, and she's here tonight. We congratulate Sue Wang. I don't know if she knows that or not, but she has the most times in the singles, 27 times. Way to go, Sue. The, uh, this is Lynn's first open team from 1980 under the banner of Georgian Bay. From the top left, the gentleman is Roy Morrison, then John Cooper, Martha Sotheby, Norm Barkley, and Richard Knox. The bottom left is Mary Petty, the coach is Nick Wojciechowski, and an unmarried Lynn Mahoney on the right. In 1987, the zone changed to Heronia, and then this lady's team are from the top left. That's Marianne Corbett, Sheila Hefford, the scorer is Tim Payne, Helen McCallum was there, Lynn and Carrie Gibbs. Seated are Rose Mackey, hasn't changed a bit on time. <laughs> Amazing. And of course, the coach was Ron Mackey. Well, Lynn would finish second in the provincial singles twice, 1995 and 2004. She was victorious in 2000. Lynn averaged 280 in the qualifying round and added a 328 single in the championship game. And she's seen here with the male winner, that's David Michael from Niagara. From Sid Morris, Lynn received a check for $1,000, a sponsorship trophy, a championship trophy, I mean, and a new watch. Bowling in the Nationals in Hamilton, Lynn led the qualifying round, but lost a one-game final to Melissa O'Brien of Newfoundland, as in those days, they, they didn't have the two games you had to win. She shared the podium with the male silver medalist. The gentleman's name was Doug McCaw, Saskatchewan. 2014 was a highlight year, not only the 50th year of the Open, but also for Lynn, 
as she had the opportunity to bowl in the open with her daughter, Andrew. From the top left here in this shot, that's Marianne Corbett, Tracy Armiston, Sandy Dixon, and Lynn. Seated at the bottom left are Peggy Ham, the coach is Amy Bendell, and of course, that's her daughter, Andrea White, on the right. Linwood also enjoyed great success in the Master Bowlers Association. She began in the teaching division, seen here with youth bowlers, Ashley Grant on the left, and on the right, that's Jason Green. Overall, she won four events, two in the teaching division and two in the tournament division. And here's the 1990-91 Midwinter Blues Champions. From the left, that's Don Chase and Wendy Hayward, NBA board member Ron D'Onofrio and Lynn, and seated is our sponsor at the time, Louise Roberge of Mendez. Lynn won two provincial NBA O events. Here's the 1996 Thanksgiving Classic Champions. Lynn is pictured here along with Tony DiRienzo. And the 1999 New Year's Classic, and she's pictured here with the male winner, Doug Stewart. More extraordinary were her national achievements in the Masters. She qualified four times nationally and won gold each time. In 1993 in Sudbury, this gold medal group were from the top left, that's Anna Schwartzman, Fern Wendell, Lynn, Christy Zamet, Jody Moore, and the coach was a dark-haired Dave Roeder. <laughs> she won the next year in Oshawa. And here from the left again, we're going to have a look at it's Brenda Pankoff, Joanne Corum, Brenda Walters, Lynn, Claudina Sula, and again, the coach, Dave Roeder. More success in 1997 in Winnipeg. And from the left, we can see Sandy Lyons. The coach this time was Pam Weeby. Then Christy Zamet, Lynn, Linda McLean, and Sandy Dixon. This group were winners in 1999 in British Columbia. From the left is Stacy Zamet, Lynn, Elizabeth Nickel, Ruth Olson, Jody Craig, and the coach there is Ian Cameron. Locally, Lynn was the class five bowler as this team won the national classified provincially in 2004, and they finished fourth nationally. The top left there, I think, is Lynn. Then I see uh, Jillian Landry and Susan Fryer. Kneeling are Lee Handley from the Bowling Center and Susan Priest. Lynn was a YBC volunteer for 15 years, and with her talent, participated at the bowling school as a pro for three of those years, as well as sending her daughter to attend. In, that, in the year 2000, the Heronia Zone inducted Lynn into their Hall of Fame. She's seen here with MC Rex Dorkings, and that same year she was ranked 37 on the top 90 list and also named as one of the top 100 female bowlers in Canada as announced in 2009. Lynn has also been recognized for her achievements by the town of Collingwood and she is the hometown legend at her center, Georgian Bowl. Seen here with her husband, Alan, they have raised the three daughters, Andrea, Deanna, and Paige, and now there is also a granddaughter, Kiara, and Deanna and Andrea are both bowling with Lynn on the Tuesday night league at the center. Ladies and gentlemen, our Hall of Famer tonight, Lynn White, Hall of
Dale struggles. Dale joins a group of bowlers who grew up in Oshawa under the guidance of Bruce England and bowling in his two centers, Motor City and the Oshawa Center. Dale's parents were part-time employees at the Oshawa Center. And here's a big group shot of the bowling center staff. Dale's in the top row there at the left with all the hair. The second row at the right, you might see Charlie Brown. And in the front row is Carol Brown. Bill Lyon is in the center. <coughs> Next to him is Benny Jones. Dale was a very good bowler in the YBC. As early as eight years old, he bowled in the provincial finals. That's Dale at the top left, and the young good-looking coach is Mike Childerhoes. <laughs> Mike is here tonight as Dale's, as Dale's guest, and certainly Mike has to be recognized as a great teacher for Dale, and also several of the other bowlers from the Motor City. Dale also won events at both the CNE and the Sportsman Show. In this shot at the CNE in 1979, that's Rose Raddick of Bowl Ontario on the left, and also see second over there, I can see Shelly Hill, then Dale, Bill Lyon, and the lady on the right, I think is Lee Henderson. In the adult ranks, Dale qualified for the Open on 14 occasions from 1980-81 through 1995-96. Here's a 1985 team and from the top left, that's Mel Kennedy, then Bill Lyon, the scorekeeper was Gary Monroe, Hank Sarnofsky, and Wayne Hine. Senior, of course, a young looking Roger Davies. <laughs> so on the left, the coach, of course, Mike Childerhoes is in the center, and that's Dale Underwood. Dale joined the Master Bowlers Association in 1983. He won his first event in 1989 in Lindsay, and here he receives the check from the proprietors, Sam and Karen White. This tournament win began a period of dominance for Dale and Five Pin Bowl. He won the year at MBAO event in 1992-93. Showing here with the ladies winner, of course, is Jody Moore. He began the 1993 season with his fifth tournament win in the Great Cup Classic at Albion Bowl. Partnered with Jeff Cannon in the center and Russ Herkin. He also qualified for the NBAC National Finals on four occasions. This team finished third in Newfoundland in 1989. From the left, our clean shaven Dave Panko, <laughs> Peter McDermott, then Greg, John Willick, who was the coach, then Dale and Mike Wilson. This team won in 1991 in Winnipeg. The top left is Jordan Craner, then Jim Federico and David Michael. The bottom left is Dale, Coach Brian Kay, and of course Fraser Hamlin. Here's the 1996 national champions as Dale receives his medal from Dave Rees of British Columbia, and following Dale are Ian Cameron and Coach Brian Kay. And if we extended this picture out a little further, we would see our good friend Jeff Stevens, who was uh, bringing up the rear in his humble way. <laughs> so least I can do. Dale was a believer in practice. A hundred games a week, actually, working around his job at General Motors. And it paid off. In 1983, Dale won $4,200 as he bowled a perfect game in a 369 event at Motor City Bowl. Watch your screens and you will see Dale bowling in the CBC television series at Roxy Lanes in Winnipeg. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dale took the uh, twenty-five thousand dollar winning check. We got that there. It is. I didn't see too many of those. And among other things, among other things, of course, he bought a trailer. And that was from uh, old Canada. Armed with a lot of confidence, Dale headed to Winnipeg and Saskatoon. And on your screens, you're going to see Dale bowling and winning the KG Open in Saskatoon. Bowler's Association. 
in, in 1988, and they have always volunteered as needed. Marie is a lady at the door of the open, selling both admissions and the programs. Murray, he's the judge of play, covering several shifts at the open, and as a member of the association tournament committee, is judge of play at all zone events. The job can be difficult at times, but rewarding, as Murray controls the playing area, even to the point of ordering Hamilton Association President Norm McDonald out of the playing area. Murray also does the difficult job of lane certification and does it well. He was awarded provincial recognition in 2006 as part of the Ontario Five Pin Bowlers Association incentive program. Marie and Murray have been part of five celebrations as the HBA is recognized as Zone of the Year. Here's a 1998 group. Across the back, you'll see Jeff Dunn. There's Joanne Campbell. Terry Farrell, of course, is here tonight. Priscilla Young, Fred Smith, Tom Dixon, Marie, and Christy Hyatt. Seated are Evelyn Wood, and of course, Bob Coulter, Murray, and Joyce McAlpine. The HBA began their Hall of Fame program in 2005, and Marie and Murray were inducted with the first group. The Ontario Five Pin Bowlers Association recognized Marie and Murray in 2013 for 25 years of service, and on their wrists are watches of recognition. Both Marie and Murray were level two coaches, and they coached teams on several occasions. In 1997, Murray coached the provincial champions from Bolodrome, and this team earned a trip for himself and Marie to Florida and the standard three-piece soft vinyl leggings. <laughs> from the top left, the lady's name is Julie Vazian Sullos. There's Teresa Dunnath, Murray, and Shauna McLaughlin. Down below are Sue McLean and Terry Plunk. Always wanting to travel, Murray and Marie. I've just enjoyed a second holiday this past month, and she showed me the tan here tonight because they just got back from Jamaica. Murray coached in the 1998 Winter Games in Peterborough. And Murray's in the back row. There's everybody we know in this picture. But he's in the back row, second from the left at the very back. Then you're going to see Dave Post back there. Lane Cameron's in the middle. Harry Forston's there. Mike Stoddard. And they're at the front and many familiar faces. Nationally, Murray coached the interprovincial at the interprovincial Canadian finals in 2010 albeit for Nova Scotia. Murray stepped in and sports the provincial chart from the Maritime Province. And on the Nova Scotia team, from the left, there's Catherine Dugas, Coach Murray, of course, Roy Mullen, Stan Jacques, and Matt McCullough. Be assured, Marie and Murray are a powerful volunteer couple. Marie of note began as a volunteer with Hamilton Health Sciences. Here, Murray, he's at a Diabetes Association meeting, and both of them, Marie and Murray, help out there. On top of it all, this couple give 20 hours every week to a long-term care center, St. Peter's Hospital, and have been recognized there as well for their volunteer service to geriatric excellence. What a couple, the M&Ms, Marie and Murray Neath, not only from bowling, but from the many groups they have assisted over the years. Thank you from all of us, ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famers, Marie and Murray.
from the first days of the Kitchener, Waterloo, and District Five Pin Bowlers Association. Ron Roder was involved. That said, let me take a moment to introduce the mother of the Roder clan. As at age 92, Gladys Roder is here tonight for this presentation. Inspired and mentored by Hall of Famers Walter Valentin and Orr Coleman, Ron, at just 16 years old, was a house rep for Waterloo Lanes in the new association. Soon after, Ron volunteered with both the YBC and also the Master Bowlers, as both groups were beginning to grow and thrive in the area. Ron graduated from Conestoga College. <laughs> A construction the title is everything. He was a construction technologist and accepted a position with Don Real Construction. That was a good move, as it turns out, as Ron became part of a group that eventually formed Nith Valley Construction. This company, with Ron a full partner, not only grew in the region, but through Ron, they sponsored throughout bowling to a tune of $70,000. Ron's volunteer involvement introduced him to the annual convention, of course, the AGM of the 05 PBA. He won the first of six provincial incentive awards in 1974 and his latest in 2011. Here he receives his award as proprietor of the year in 1990, and the presenter is Mariano Marconi. Here, Ron is recognized for 25 years of service and the presenter this time is Jack Hales. For 30 years, the plaque was presented by staff member Rhonda Gifford. In 2010, Ron was awarded life membership from the Ontario Five Pin Bowlers Association, and the presenter, of course, is Al Hong. Ron's zone, called Kitchener Waterloo, Conestoga, or Grand River, certainly enjoyed convention to the hilt. In this group, standing from the left, that's Ron's wife, Bev. There's Larry Shmia, Janet Steffler, Sherry and Steve Weisepper, and Ron. Seated from the left are John and Kathy Reza, Grace and Francis Kelly, Rosemary Davidson, and Gary Burkholder. <laughs> <laughs> this group, I assure you, supported our sponsors. <laughs> seem to be drinking somewhere. <laughs> if you look in the back, you might see Sandy Broman raising the bottle high, of course, as a bearded run. Then Catherine Owens, Rosemary, and Jim Lacey. And Kathy Raza is in the front. And I can only assume that the meetings were over for the day. <laughs> Ron lent his talents everywhere. And the Walter, Walter Valentin hosted the BPAO convention in 2000, one of several visits to Kitchener-Waterloo by Bowl Ontario. Here, with Brother Jerry, who's not with us tonight, he had to <laughs> make sure we all remember that. <laughs> Double book. The, uh, Brother Jerry has a comment while colleagues Don Gorman there and Mary Ann McConey listen in. Ron was an excellent bowler as well. At 22 in 1974, he's the youngest winner ever of the prestigious O'Connor Open. He joined the Master Bowlers Association. He was a tournament winner in 1977, winning the mixed triples, partnering with Ed, Ed Wood and Brian Stiver. And in this shot, I think Ron gets a runner-up check because he might have lost the tournament to Brian Kay. He gets his check from the sponsor, of course, and then the other fellow on the left is Bill Nettery. In the Masters, Ron was recognized as Zone Delegate of the Year and received his plaque from Lynn Gorman as well. Ron has always been an excellent coach. Initially offering clinics at Waterloo Lanes, he's also been a favorite choice at the Open, and enjoying some success, this team won provincially in 2010 and finished tied for fourth nationally. From the top left are Steve Hins, Coach Ron, Kevin Berg, and Scott Miller. Below are Ruth Olson, Nicole Pombe, and Karen Berg. And notice the mother and son combination there of Kevin and Karen. 
Ron coached this past year from the top left here, this one this past year, you're going to see Kim Butley, David Phipps, Matt Walker, and Brittany Schneider. Seated are Ruth Poulsen, Coach Ron, and then Corey Scott. Ron married Bev Hempel in 1975, and Bev, in order to see Ron occasionally, he became a bowling executive as well, dealing with both lottery and membership. Together they raised three girls, Angela, Jessica, and Krista, and they are grandparents of three youngsters as well. In bowling, you might think you know everyone and what they do, but not really. Here, Ron is a member of a dance group from Waterloo. That's Ron in the top row, you can see him there in the second group from the right. For five years, this ensemble performed in competitions throughout New York State and beyond. <laughs> of course, at conventions, Ron was a popular winner of our first beauty contest. But, as I remember, it wasn't even close. <laughs> Be assured, the entire Roder family have been instrumental in the success of the cause of Stoke Zone for the past 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, as they say, it's Conestoga country, and Ron Roder did it all, and tonight we recognize his extraordinary effort. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer, Ron Roder. The, uh, a look at the career of Connie Ward gives us a visual picture of one of the top female bowlers of all time. Starting at Sherwood Center, under the guidance of her parents, Erica and Bill, Connie was a force on the lanes before the age of 10. As I said, here's Connie in 1976, just 10 years old, representing Ontario in the Canadian Bantam Singles Championship. YBC rep always went with the group. This one on the left is Harold Bennett. Connie is the second young lady in there. A long-haired girl over towards the right is Pam Dignard, who we still see in the open these days, bowling out of Ottawa on the senior team. The fellow on the end is Brian Campbell of London. The Nationals were in Regina, and of course that's Connie in the center. On the left is Claudette Savoy of Quebec, and on the right is Diane Kellett of Saskatchewan. A year later, in 1977, Connie is next to, no, they have the YBC rep, and I asked everybody here tonight who that gentleman was, we didn't get it. But the young gentleman next is Mike Gorman, and uh, Connie is the second girl from the right, and she's there as the Bantam girl, and she went on to win the Canadian title in Winnipeg. As a junior in 1979, Connie won in British Columbia. On the left is Michelle Simpson of Saskatchewan, and on the right is Debbie Reed of Alberta. In 1980, the YBC Nationals were held in London. There's Connie on the left, then Kim Kayak, 
how tiny she is. And then, uh, of course, the gentleman on the right is Rhonda Pugh from Hamilton. In 1981, Connie now is senior in Ontario. She won over Brenda Taylor, I think she was from London, and Monica Jacket. And she would win her fifth national title in Edmonton. And in 1984, Connie qualified for the sixth time and the championships were in St. John's, Newfoundland. This Ontario group has Vic Tugwell, of course, is on the left. In the center there, you look, you might see Elizabeth Nickel, then Connie, Bill Lyon, and of course the YBC rep in the white on the right is Marilyn Haggard. Completing her Cross Canada tour, Connie went for the 16th, sixth time as an 18-year-old senior. That's Laura Lewis of Newfoundland Labrador on the left and Denise Cardinal of Northern Ontario on the right. These six championships earned Connie the title of YBC Bulwark of the Century for the first 100 years of our sport. With this success, Connie was an automatic invite to the selection camp for the 1983 Canada Games. Here is the team that was selected and are pictured with the game's mascot. Standing, of course, Diana Lethbridge, Connie, Claudine Alista, and Shelley Bill. <coughs> Sitting are Anita Robinson, and the coach was Marge D'Onofrio. Moving to the adults' ranks was seamless. In her first year, 1986, Connie won the Provincial Open singles title, and the Hamilton ladies team won both the provincial and national titles. In this group picture, standing from the left, are Pat Mahoney, Jan Askin, the 05 rep, of course, is Eric Whitaker, then Sue Davies, and Sharon Marlowe. Sitting are from the left, of course, that's Connie, looking like she's scared out of her mind. <laughs> the coach is Betty Jones, of course, she's here tonight. Scorekeepers Kathy Barker here as well, and Josie Tuck. Nationally, this lady, Steve, won gold. Connie took second in the singles, losing to Laura Mitchell of Northern Ontario. In 1988, the Hamilton ladies won again, both provincially and nationally. Bowling in Hall, Quebec, standing from the left, there's Sue Davies, Cheryl Bates, Josie Tuck, Connie looking a lot happier this time, <laughs> and Pat Mahoney. Seated are from the left, Darlene Wolf, the coach is Irene Whitley, and the scorekeeper was Pam Sakula. This Hamilton team won gold in 2005 in Edmonton. The coach is Martin Talbot at the top. From the left, there's Connie, Brenda Walters, Sandy Lyons, Mark McLaughlin, Kelly Martin, and Shannon Glover. Connie won her first National Open singles title in 2007 in Sudbury, and she's pictured here with the men's singles rep from Ontario, Josh Perone. Connie won the Ontario Open singles title for a third time in 2010 and is pictured here with the men's singles winner, Terry Little. Nationally, Connie lost to another bowling legend this time, Diane Violini of Alberta. In the Master Bowlers Association, Connie won the annual bursary tournament, which offered a free year in the Masters. She began her career in 1985 and in her first year won the Spring Classic her first of nine tournament wins. As well, she made the 1986 Ontario team that went gold in Hamilton. From the top left, you're gonna to see Sue Topping, Anita Robinson, the coach is Dot Britton, and Brenda Pancock. Seated are Connie and Christine Denis of Quebec as this province bowled with Ontario at that time. The next year, 1987, this group won again in the nine -0. From the top left, you're going to see Anna Schwartzman, Cheryl Bates, Sue Topping, and Coach Dot. Neely Arcani, and then the young lady is Sue Hoffman. This 1992 team won in Victoria. From the top left are Claudina Lista, Stephanie Tuck, and Connie. Seated are Fern Wendell, coaches Rob Ward, of course, <coughs> and Brenda Walters. Here's a final team that won in 2008 in Hamilton. <laughs> Off left, Connie, it's Brenda Walters, and Joanne Nadeau, and Sandy Dixon. The uh, senior are Jen Galbraith, and the coach, Jeff Forrestan. Connie has done it all, not only in our sport, but in both duck pin and ten pin as well. 
In just 18 months, she won enough tournament points to qualify and be inducted into the Ladies Duck Pin Hall of Fame. And through 10 pin bowling, Connie also qualified for Team Canada. Through 10 pin, Connie also learned how to, what's called, read lanes. And in a conversation I had with a top U.S. bowler, she called Connie the best ever at that school and the ability to adjust while on the lanes. This ability certainly allowed Connie to coach and coach successfully as well. You're going to see three shots. This 1989 Ontario Bantam team won a gold medal in Regina. And I think on the right you're going to see David Burke. This team won the Youth Challenge uh, provincially. The top left you're going to see Christine Pilon, Daryl Holdick, and Stephanie Tuck. On the lower level are Tim Bates, Connie, Coach Connie, and Scott Hill. Here's a gold medal for Masters team that won in Surrey in 2007. From the left are Christy Lampin, Joanne Nadeau, Jane Galbraith, Carol McDonald, and Coach Connie. The kneeling at the front is Barb McLaughlin. Ladies and gentlemen, Connie, and I say, we have, we're all, the people that are younger look younger to me, and to think that she's 51 years old, we have known her since she was 10. Uh, it just seems incredible. And I only say that, and you, you don't give those ladies ages forever, but you only say that just to make some of the older people here just feel a little bit older. <laughs> you know, but Connie, she works at Credit Valley Hospital. Uh, she's still bowling, she's still winning. She kept a, a duck pin tournament this past uh, summer. Ladies and gentlemen, she's not only an outstanding bowler, I really believe she's one of Canada's outstanding athletes. Hall of Famer, Connie Ward.
once again, Walter's attention to detail in researching and preparing these presentations has once again provided us with a better understanding of the history of the sport of our great sport of pipe and bowling. Ladies and gentlemen, I may just give him a standing round of applause, but I think he deserves to have another one. Walter, thank you for having me back. Choosing five pin bowling with your participation. We are all we are all honored with your presence here this evening. Sincere congratulations to all of you. For anyone who is interested in learning more about the Hall of Fame and its Hall of inductees, I urge you to log on to the O5PBA.ca website and click on the Hall of Fame link under the other events menu and feel free to read up on all of the inductees in our Hall of Fame. One new thing that we're going to try doing this year that we haven't done in the past and was asked for by somebody, so we're going to try doing it, is all of the inductees, yes, Tom, over you. <laughs> all of the inductees uh, immediately after we uh, adjourn here to go do what we want for the evening, I'm going to ask you over to over to see um, Jerry on our side there so we can get a class of 2017 picture. And we'll start doing that each year we do the induction ceremony as well. To all the zone delegates and zone and DC executive here this evening, I have a gift for you tonight. You get an extra hour to sleep. <laughs> but just a general reminder, our semi-annual meeting will convene here in this room at 9 a.m. Nice. Yes. Yeah. That's a new 9 a.m. <laughs> this includes the formal portion of the evening's event. As I indicated at the beginning of the ceremony, after we get the official class of 2015 picture done, 17 picture done, we will, uh, the inductees will be more than willing to stand around and get home done for you. I hope you enjoy the program as much as I have, and have a great night. Thank you.